this morning, I love the fact that, you know, when, we, when things line up, I have had this message that I've been wanting to preach for a long time. I want to preach a message and seemed like, I was like, Lord, I hope this is a message that you, you want to share this morning. And seemed like from the time we started all the way until now, everything's lined up to share this message. Every song, every, what, what Pastor Jake read, everything just lined up to talk about this morning, the goodness of God. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Is it me? Or when we sing that song, my, my fear doesn't have a chance when I stand in, in your love. Does, does, is it me or does it, that sound like a country song when we first start? Is it just me? I love that. And what's even more weird is Roland's the one leading that song. So it's, just, it's a whole nother deal. <laughs> and that, but I do love that song, though. I was like, I'm, I'm, I told Ron, I, go, I feel like I'm listening to 99.5 The Wolf when, I, when that, song, that song comes on. So anyway, I wanted to talk about the goodness of God. Now, we will talk about the goodness of God because Pastor Terry was, was talking. He's been talking about giving. He's been talking about uh, money and finances. But the truth is, is that we, when I talk about his goodness, we're not talking about the fact that, that God is good because of what he does. He's good because, of, because that's who he is. Yeah. Right? Because we, if we try to base his goodness on what he does, uh, we just say, well, he's good just because, because that's just what he does. And we say this all the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Until we get to a place where we don't feel like he's good. Right? When we get to a place where we don't feel like he's good or we may wake up on the wrong side of the bed or some situations or circumstances aren't going the way that we want them to or some things are not lining up the way that we want them to and it doesn't necessarily feel like he's good. It doesn't necessarily look like he's good. It doesn't necessarily smell like he's good or everything else is going crazy. But this fact still remains that he is good. Amen. Again, he's not good because of what he does. He's good because that's who he is. And then the Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he doesn't change. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variation of turning. That means that he's not a respecter of persons. He's not changing with the days. He's not changing with your circumstance. He's still good, and he's still a good father. Amen? Amen? And he was, so that's, that's what I, I, want, I want you guys to understand because, because he, he is good. Now, um, yesterday it rained a ton. And what was good about that is I, I, every morning, especially when it looks like I may, I may have a day off uh, or I, I have a day where I can, you know, do some things, I asked Vanessa. I lean over to her in the morning. This is without fail. I lean over to her and said, what would you, do you need me to do today? What, what do you need me to do to help you? How can, I, how can I help you? What do you need me to do? And she goes, absolutely nothing. I go, no, I'm really, I really want to know. I'm going to find out exactly what do you want me to do today? Because there's football on or some things that are going to be on. You know, I just want to know. I want to know. Yeah. Right up. You say, husband, that's wisdom right now. I'm telling you right now. That right there, I'm cost you nothing. I ask. It's like, I really want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. What do you want me to do today? She goes, absolutely nothing. I don't want you to do anything. She goes, not only that, she goes, I don't care what you do. You can do whatever you want to do. And so I said, I was like, can you speak into the microphone? I just want to make sure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to. Just want to make sure because later on I'm going to play it. No, I'm just kidding. And so she goes, uh, she goes, no, just do whatever you want. And so I'm like, man, this is great. It's raining. I'm not going to go anywhere. The only thing I knew I needed to do <laughs> was get a haircut. And, that, and that, that's nothing because I don't have any hair. So anyway, so I, I went. So I was watching football when the boys were watching some stuff or whatever. And then lo and behold, I, no, and I asked Vanessa, I go, hey, what are you going to do? She goes, I may just, I don't know. I'm going to try some recipes. I go, okay, good. Go do your recipes. I'm then sitting there watching, watching the game with the boys. We're sitting there watching TV. And all of a sudden, the whole house is filled with this aroma, this smell. And, 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 and you know, like in the cartoons where that smell thing comes in and lifts the guy's nose and brings him into the kitchen? That's exactly what happened to me. I just found myself transported into the kitchen, found myself in there in the kitchen. And she had cooked two pies. She cooked a cake. She cooked some chili. She cooked uh, some other pies. And they're all in there. And the boys are like, Daddy, we cooking. I go, be quiet. Shh. Listen, what are you doing? She goes, man, I'm cooking. And I'm just telling you, I started eating stuff. And I, I was like, man, this is so good. I was like, amazing. So you guys don't know, Vanessa's a chef. She cooks all the time. She's a great cook. Vanessa, 
That was actually her maiden name, was Vanessa Kelly Cook. That was her, that was her maiden name. I, I told my friends, I go, I'm marrying her because her middle name is Ken. <laughs> Vanessa Ken Cook, you know what I'm saying? That was my deal. I was like, man, she can, she, she can cook. And so I just found myself gorging on all this wonderful food. I was slapping the kids in. Don't touch that. That's mine. You know, labeling stuff in the refrigerator. Don't touch that. That's mine. All of this is mine. It's all mine. Everything is by me, to me, from me, to, through me. You know, it's like, don't touch anything. And so, you know, and so we, I went back in, in the bedroom. So I'm just telling you, Vanessa, is, she is a good cook. Now, let me just be honest with you. There are some days when she is not cooking. There are some days where because she's busy and she's taking the kids here and there that I have to eat Captain Crunch and shredded wheat. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and you know what I'm saying? And I have to eat that stuff. And let me just tell you this. Uh, it doesn't make Vanessa not a good cook. Just because I have to eat Captain Crunch and shredded wheat, she's still a good cook. It doesn't matter what, what, what she does. She's still a good cook. And you know what? The Lord is in leftovers. Can I just tell you something? He's in leftovers, right? Look, all this is leftovers. <laughs> Every single bit of it is leftovers. So the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because, you, because just because God does something and, and he does something good and you say, man, he's good. Oh, isn't God good? He's so good. And then he doesn't do what, what we want him to. Or we prayed for something that didn't happen. Still does not mean that he's not good. He's still good. He's still good. Just because he doesn't do necessarily what you want him to or the prayer didn't come in the way that you that you prayed for and how that it came through or how it's supposed to come through. It means that he's still good. Now, here's the reason why I'm, I'm really wanting to talk about this. This was one of the weeks, the anniversary of the one of the weeks that I went to a doctor down at UT Southwest Western this week. And I went down to UT Southwestern and they told me that there was nothing that they can do for me. This is what they said. They go, there's, they go, man, sir, Mr. McCray, we, we appreciate that you come to see us. I go, these are the best doctors in the world. Everyone comes here. These are the best doctors in the world. And, they, and I walked in and they said, there's nothing that we can do for you. And they sent me away. And I will remember, as I knew I was going to have to call Vanessa and I was going to have to call Terry. And I just knew I was sitting down in my, in my car after that visit saying to myself, God, this is it. This is all there is. And there, there's nothing. I've gone to the best. I've gone to the best of the best, and that's all that they can do. And I remember sitting down in my car. I hadn't even started it yet. And the Lord spoke to me. And he goes, but I'm still good. I'm still good. I am, I am still good. And so I remember saying that, and I remember going, yes, Lord, you're still good, but I'm just going to have to accept it. And I remember saying, but I'm still good. And I remember calling Vanessa, and Vanessa going, hey, God's still good. And then I remember calling Terry, and you know what he said. <laughs> What did he say? So he's still good. And then this is what he says. Last time I checked, he's still on the throne. You guys are going to learn this stuff before it's, too old, too, before it's over with. We got a starting place. Let's turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. We got to start somewhere talking about God's goodness because if you don't necessarily know where to start and knowing where, where he's good, you got to go to the word because everything else is going to try to tell you that he's not good. Everything else is going to scream to you that he's not good. And so you got to go to the thing, the one, the one place where you know that he it won't ever pass away, and that's his word. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is Good before he is good. So the Bible says that, and then then it says uh, then in Psalms you don't have to turn there. I'm going to read it. Psalms 34 verse verse eight. You've heard this one before. That says, oh, "Taste and see that the Lord is good." Uh, and you know what? I'm the truth is we're going to turn to Psalms 100 uh, verse four through five. But here's here's the truth. You may not know this, but I'm looking at God's goodness and His faithfulness right now. As I'm looking at you, his faithfulness, his goodness. Somebody's like, you must, you're not looking at me. Yeah, I'm looking at you because you are a testimony of God's goodness and his faithfulness. Well, you don't necessarily know what I'm going through, Pastor Chris. You have no idea what I'm going through. I, have, I understand. I don't know what, what you're going through. But God does. And here's what he says. He's still faithful from generation to generation. He continues to be faithful and he's still good. He still continues to be good. Here's what it says in Psalms 100. Four through five, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love is eternal. 
and his faithfulness endures to all generations. His faithfulness endures through all the generations. And it says, it talks about how, how he is good. Now, there was a time, um, just a, about a month ago, I was driving with my kids. Uh, we were driving, and for some reason, for some reason, they started talking about who's going to get all my stuff when I die. <laughs> it's a true story. I'm not making this up. It's a true story. CJ goes, Dad, I want the AR. He goes, I want to make sure I get, I get your AR-15. Can I get that? And then, see, Luke, you can have whatever you want. He goes, I want his fishing equipment, but I get all the handguns. You know, and they're having this conversation without me. I don't even know how it came up, but they started talking about all this stuff. Man, I want dad's, I want all his electronic stuff. I want his, I'm all this stuff. And I'm just like, uh, excuse me. Hello. I'm still alive. You know, I'm still here. He's like, yeah, but, but dad, <laughs> you got some good stuff. You got to admit, you do have some good stuff. I go, I know I have good stuff, but how about I run this car into a tree and none of you get anything? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just run this car into a, just right now into a tree and then the, the girls will get everything and sell everything and you just be in heaven mad, you know, just because they got everything. <laughs> be sitting up in heaven. I can't believe she's selling that. You know what I'm saying? Dad, I had give, I dibs on that. <laughs> go play your harp. But anyway, so the truth is, <laughs> they were, but the truth is, this is the reason why they were talking about this. They were talking about the fact that, that they were like, Dad, really, you, they were telling me, Dad, you're a good dad. You really are a good dad. I now know the Bible, and I go back to the Bible where it says that you being an evil father know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more does your heavenly father know how to give good gifts to you? And so we, they were talking about, they were saying, Dad, you're, you're a good dad. And I said, well, I appreciate that. But then I said this, I want you to remember this. As you said that I'm a good dad, I want you to remember this when I call you into uh, alignment with what, who God's called you to be. I want you to remember this when I say things to you that bothers you, when I say things to you that you don't like. I want you to remember this when, when you're going through a hard time and when I'm disciplining you and all those things. Remember these things because it's not necessarily my stuff that's good. I don't want you to remember the fact that I give you good things all that necessarily, but I want you to remember the fact that my heart towards you is good. And I have good things in store for you and that I love you and I want you to walk in the wills and way in the will and ways of Christ. That's what I really want for you. And so just because I have good stuff or I want to give you good stuff or I want you to be blessed and different things like that doesn't mean that my goodness stops and that when when I'm when I'm chastising you and I'm or I'm causing you and I'm saying things to you that you don't like. And here's what I want to say to you, it's the same thing. He's a good good father and it doesn't necessarily matter. Sometimes there's good things when you're just like, "Oh man, he's so good. He's so amazing. He's doing all these great things in my life and all these things are falling into place and it seems like there's nothing that I can't lose and seems like every and then when you go through hard times and things that are that are not going on in your life that you would like that you change places and be like he's not good he, he must not be good today he must not be doing those things today he must have stopped his love toward me must have stopped his goodness toward me must have stopped and that's not it at all he's a good father and the father and the bible says whom a father loves he chastens and he loves amen so it doesn't stop. It doesn't mean that he's that he's not good. He's always good. Again, he's all he always is good. He's good and his mercies endures forever. His mercies are new every morning. And he's he's still he's still good. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says the Bible talks about him in his in his goodness. And the Bible says that we are to look to him. And it's how you see him. If you don't see him, he's good. Oh, taste and see that he's good. If you can't see, taste and then you can see. What does tasting have to do with your eyes? What does it have to do with your eyes? But the truth is, is there, <laughs> when you taste something, it goes into your, your thinking. Man, this is, everything is lined up and he's wired everything to, for you to even see him in a different light. For you to see him differently. That's why when we pray in Ephesians that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened in the knowledge of him. That once you taste his goodness, your eyes are open and you'll be like, that's him. That's my God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Even in the, in the hard times. 
That's what I love about David. Even when uh, Pastor Jake was talking about him a few weeks ago, and I said this first service, sometimes I think David was white because he was so schizophrenic all the time. You understand what I'm saying? He was just crazy all the time. I'm just kidding. He couldn't have been black because he, <laughs> he couldn't have been black because he, he'd have been too cool for that. But anybody ever get to a, <laughs> ever get to a place uh, where you where just like David was, where th- he's just like, oh, taste and see the Lord. Oh, he's talking about the goodness of God. And then in the next chapter, he's talking about how, um, how awful things are. How do you go from how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to dash their babies against the rocks, oh God, and, and break out their fangs, oh God? I'm like, oh my goodness, that escalated quickly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how did it escalate so quickly? Like, how do you go from to there? But it's true, though. We laugh, but it's true. I remember, and I've told you guys some of this story, but I've not told you all of it, that, that back when Vanessa and I were, were trying to decide, I was working at Delta Airlines, trying to decide if I was going to come here. I've told you some of that story where I'd go to Pastor Terry. I was like, Pastor Terry, they're going to move me to Atlanta. You got you to do something. We got to figure something out. And Pastor Terry, would, he'd, I'd go to him, and Vanessa would say, Go to Pastor Terry and find out what he would say, what he's going to say. And I go to Terry, and Terry would be like, well, you know, God's good. You know, he's, he's amazing. His love is never failing. You know, just, just trust the Lord. And so I go back to Vanessa, and she goes, what did he say? I'd be like, we're going to die. We're not going to make it. We're not going to live. We're not going to make it. She goes, honey, calm down. Go to him again. You probably didn't ask it right. Just go to him again. She goes, I know you probably went in and was just like, Lord, please give me another job. No, I didn't do that. She goes, go to him again and ask him, what does he think should happen? You know, what should, you should do. So I go to him again. And I go, Pastor Terry, what do you think should happen right here? What do you think is going on? What do you think we should do? It's 9-11. They're going to move me. If I don't move me, that means I'm not going to be here anymore. He goes, well, you know, you got to just trust God. And, you know, God's good. And last time I checked... You know, still on the throne, you know, and he's, 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 he's never failing. His love is never failing. It changed. And I was like, okay. And I go back and I said, what do you say? We're going to die. We're not going to make it. Oh, what have we done? You know, take this. You get all emotional. Rent your clothes like in the Bible. You know, rip, rip your clothes. I don't know what's going to happen. And so I remember Pastor Terry saying that, and then I remember Vanessa and I going over these things in our minds, going, we don't know necessarily what's going to happen. Here's what we know. This is what we know. We do know that God is good. We, 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 can't just, we, can't, we can't just sing it in a song. We can't just read about it. We're going to have to experience it. And that's what I'm telling you t- today. Some of you is just like, it sounds good. It sounds good in a song. It sounds good when you read it. But the truth is, is that he's still good. And so what, what, we, what we decided to do was, as I just told, I said, Vanessa, I feel like we're supposed to make this move from, from, go, from working at Delta for me to work here. Now, here's what you don't understand. We had great benefits at Delta. We had, we had amazing benefits. A kid cost 10 bucks just to have. I mean, that was just amazing. 10 bucks. And then, we, and then not only that, Vanessa was like, those are great benefits. I go, they're good benefits. And she she goes, not only that, you're going to lose all your flight benefits. She goes, I can fly anywhere in the world because you work at Delta. Now I'm going to lose all those flight benefits. I'm, going to, I'm not going to be able to just fly and see my mom whenever. She goes, she goes, what are you doing to this family? I go, I know what I'm doing. We just got to trust God. I'm telling you, we just got to trust God. She goes, you have no idea what you're doing to this family. I go, oh, we just got to trust God. So I left her and went in, in, the, in the garage and I banged my head up on the Jeep and said, God, what are you doing to this family? What are you doing to this family? We can't take this anymore. I hope you know what you're doing because I have no idea exactly what's going on in my life. Anybody can attest to that. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Can you, can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then when you're the father, you don't necessarily know what's going on. And, and, and you sometimes you're just like, I got to trust God. You got to be strong in front of the family. But sometimes it's not, it's not always easy. Like that one time I was watching Odella with Brayden. And, and, and then she goes, she goes, Dad, why did they kill that yellow dog? And I was like, I don't know why they killed that yellow dog. I love that dog. You know, I'm in there crying with her. I'm supposed to be the strong one. And that's the, and that's the way it was. I banged my head up against the, and against the, I remember doing that, just, just going crazy. Just going, God, I have no idea. And I'm being vulnerable with you right now. I did. I had no idea what God had in store for me. And so I'm crying, but I didn't want to do it in front of my wife. I didn't want to do it in front of my kids. And I just cried out to God. I go, God, what are you doing? Because I have no idea. And so... 
I know you've done that. I know we've done that before. It's just like, God, I have, I, have, I have no idea. And I remember after all the crying was done, after I wiped my nose, wiped all the tears, I remember sitting down in the quiet. And here's what the Lord said. He goes, here's what I want you to do. He goes, I want you to write your pediatrician and tell her that you're not going to be using her anymore. Don't, don't ask for anything. Don't ask for a, a dime. But just tell her that you won't be using her anymore. And so I did. I wrote her a letter. I did that. And then he goes, I want you to just wait. And so slowly but surely, she calls us and she goes, hey, those are my kids. She goes, I've been praying over those kids ever since they were born. She goes, so I'm telling you right now, all you have to pay is the copay. We're going to write off the rest of it. Don't even worry about it one bit. And so then after that, my buddies from Delta called. They go, hey, we heard, you, we heard you're leaving Delta and going to work at a church. I go, yeah. They go, you'll never have to worry about flights because we're going to give you all the buddy passes that you need for your wife to be able to fly. And so then all of a sudden, but, but you know, you, y'all saying, well, but Vanessa was not convinced at the time. She's just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what about the money? Because we were going to take a pay cut to, 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 join, to come here. And so I just, and then so, but you know how I was. You know, this, this, the whole time God's doing these things. I'm like, see, God, I knew you were going to be faithful. I knew all along I was trusting you. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. And lean not to your own understanding. And acknowledge him in all of your ways. And he will direct your path. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all of a sudden being this God that I, that I knew. And all of a sudden, something else would happen. I'd be like, see, God, I knew. I knew you were faithful. Everyone else doubted you, but I knew that you were faithful. And, and, and then looking back on all the things that he had done during that time in my life, I look back and I saw that God had took he was taken care of us every single little thing. There'd be times when, whether there's groceries that come or somebody saw fit to give us some money to do something or whatever, God was so faithful. And I'm telling you what, those experiences, even in the midst of trial, in the midst of torment, in the midst of things that you're going through. Everything that you're going through is not designed to break you because God is in the midst of the storm and he's able to stand up in the midst of the storm and say, peace be still to your storm and still bring you out to declare his goodness over your life. Because he's good. Because he's good. And you can ask Vanessa, that's one of the stories that she tells. She tells one of the stories. She goes, yes. She goes, I did doubt him. You know, she goes, I didn't necessarily know if he knew what he was talking about. But God has been faithful. And I'm telling you this. Look at this. Look at your own life. Look back at your life and see how God has carried you, how he's maneuvered you, how he has kept you, and how he has preserved you for such a time as this. Some of you are in a bad place right now. He's just like, you don't know where I'm at right now, but you're still here. Just as long as you got breath in your lungs, as long as... As you have breath, you can say, as long as I have breath in my lungs, I will praise the Lord in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my sorrow, in the midst of the storm that I'm going through. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to give him thanks because thanks be to God who gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? And so he'll cause his goodness to pass before you. His goodness, his goodness. He continue he, because he is good. Not because, he, again, because he's doing good things, but because he is good. That's who he is. That's why I love that Pastor Roland is singing these songs about who he is and who we are in him. And these songs, and they're not just songs, they're a reality. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is a light in the darkness. That's who he is. You understand and that song? I love it when we sing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because you need it to get make its way from here down to your heart. So that even in the midst of storms and in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation, that you still know that he's good. That's why he says count it all joy when you enter in these storms and trials and tribulations because he's perfecting you. Amen? Amen. He did not bring you this far to leave you in that place because he takes us from glory to glory. Amen? It's from victory to victory. We've already won the victory. So that's, that's, that's who he is. Amen? That's, that's his, his amazing love. Now, here's, I, I read this the other night, but I, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to make reference to it to this morning, and that is when, when Moses asked God in, in Exodus to show me your way, he said, show me your way, and then God says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cause, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock, 
and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cause my goodness to pass before you, right before your eyes. I'm gonna cause my goodness to pass before you. And I always have pondered that, because I, I said this the other night, and I mean it, and, and that is this. If I'm gonna ask somebody, show me their way, I wanna, I'm asking, show me the way you do things. Show me the way that you think. Show me the way that you, why you do certain, the, the things that you do. Show me your way. Show me how, why, what, what are you doing? Show me what you're thinking. I want to know. I want to know exactly what's, well, show me your way. And God of his infinite wisdom says, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. That's his way. He wants to show you his goodness. He, his desire is to show you his goodness. Now, I'm gonna, I didn't share this to the first service, but I'm going to share this story here. When Vanessa and I started talking, we started talking together about giving and about tithing. I remember saying, saying to her, she goes, well, what do you want to do? I was like, well, she goes, I told her, I said, this is my, this is my journey, honey, about giving. I, I was given when I was, was taught to give when I was a kid. I said, we, we gave. Vanessa came out of the Catholic church. And, uh, and um, they gave and stuff. But I told her my experience was is that we gave. And she said, well, how, is that, how does that affect you now? I said, it was easy to give when I was giving my parents money. <laughs> it was. I was like, it was so easy for me to just give when I was just, they were like, here, here's some money. I'd be like, hoo I was tempted by the enemy to go to the Coke machine before I went to children's church. And I thought I was so proud of myself because I didn't take that money and go to the Coke machine before I went to children's church to give that money. But it was easy to give. It was easy to give when my parents gave me a dollar. They gave me 75 cents, or even $5 or whatever to put in the offering plate. But I knew they tithed and I knew they gave. And so, so I remember saying, I said, let's pray about it and find out what we need to do. And I remember thinking to myself, man, God, this is crazy because if I, and just so I shared, shared last week, if I give this amount of money, that means I don't have it. It means I don't have it. So if I give it, give it away, it doesn't make sense. And he didn't say anything. <laughs> so maybe I'll say it another way. I'll say it this way. God, have you lost your mind? <laughs> Are you serious? That means this is how much money I'm making. And this is how, like, he doesn't know. I'm, I'm trying to, you ever do that, try to explain to God something that he already knows? Like, God, this is how much money I'm making. And because I'm making this much money, if I give it, that means I don't have it. And that means I can't give it to this. And you are the one that wants me to get on the budget because you have me marry Vanessa, who wants us to stay on the budget. And I just like to spend. You know, and usually in a marriage, there's a spender and there's a saver, right? Yeah. And guess which one I am? <laughs> I'm the spender. I can see stuff. I mean, you, my Vanessa doesn't even send me to the store anymore because I come back with stuff we don't need. Why do we need a five-gallon jar of mayonnaise? I don't know. I just saw it. It looks like it. It looks great. It's big. You know, it's huge. <laughs> Have you seen this? Vanessa doesn't even send me to the store anymore. And so I'm the spender. She's the saver. And so I'm just like, God, we, we're not gonna, we don't have it. And here's what he said to me. This is just as plain as day. He said to me this. He goes, the reason why you're struggling with this is because you don't believe that I'm good. He said it just as plain as day. I go, that's not true. <laughs> I said that. I go, that's not true. I told God he's a liar, basically. I said, that's not true. I know you're good. I say that you're good all the time. Really, Lord, I know that you're good. I'm pr I, I'm, I love the fact that you're good. You've been good to me. He goes, no. Let's see. He goes, let's brass tacks. You don't believe that I'm good. Because if you believe that I was good, then you, wouldn't, well, you knew that I would take care of you all the days of your life. You know that I would, I'm, I'm your provider. Your, your job is not your source. You're not your source. Those things that you're looking to are not your source. I'm your source, and I'm the one that's going to provide for you. I said that I would provide for you. That I, I, would, I would give you what you needed. And, and my name is Jehovah Jireh. He provides for those, those needs of those according to his riches and glories by Christ Jesus. And the truth was that he was right. I really didn't believe he was good with my finances. Then to come to find out I didn't really believe that he was good in a lot of things. And I found myself having to repent to God because I didn't believe that he was good with my finances. Then I didn't believe that he was good enough to protect my family. Then I didn't think he was good enough to make sure that things were going right in my marriage. And then I would also say that there were things that are not good in raising my kids and different things like this. And that all led up to the, the things that were going on in my heart. So I had to repent and say, God, I trust you. I trust you. 
I, I'm sorry. I'm not, and I, and, I'm, and when Vanessa and I made a vow that we, maybe what she just said is, hey, we're going to make sure that we give. We're going to make sure that we give more, even if we're going to start giving. And not only are we going to give, we're going to give more than our, than our tithe. We're going to give more than just the 10%. We're going to make sure that it goes up. And we're, we're going to make sure we're going to look at it every year and find out how it can go up. And I'm going to tell you what, the other day she was trying, she, this is what she said she was going to do at the beginning of the year. She said, I'm going to take note of everything that comes in and how God has blessed us. I checked on it the other day. She goes, I can't keep up with it. I can't keep up with all that God's done for us. I'm telling you, I tried to write it down. She, she started, it was a good list, but she goes, I can't keep up with it. He has been blessing us left and right. He's going above and beyond. And he's, he's, we can't out give God. I can imagine that. I'm trying to give more than him, but I can't give more than him because he's an amazing father. And because he's an amazing father, I'm not going to record it anymore. I'm just going to declare from the top of my lungs with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul that God, you are good and your mercies endure forever. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. This is about bottom line. I quit. Quit trying to be the source. I quit. I st I'm stopping. I'm not trying to be everything to everybody. I'm, I quit. I'm not going to try to outgive you. I'm just going to declare, uncle, you're God and you're good. And because you're good, I want to see that I'm going to proclaim your goodness. And I'm not going to give out of obligation. I'm going to give because I know that you are the giver and you live on the inside of me. And I know this, that you'll supply all of my needs according to your riches and glories by Christ Jesus. And I can take that to the bank. Amen. Amen. Last thing I'm going to say, because I got three minutes. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how the enemy, though, plays that sound and that cues the music when you're going through the roughest part of your, your battle. It's like we were watching a show the other day and um, it's just like this. It, the, the plot was going downhill and you know it's the part where you pull the covers up I don't do that but pull the covers up over your I do sometimes uh, up to your face and, it, and the music starts in dun 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 the music is, is designed to make the problem be worse than it is and the enemy does that. He tries to get the music playing in your heart to make you say, look at your bills. Dun, dun, dun. Look at them, the way they're looking at you and the way that things aren't going good on your job. Dun, dun, dun. And he's playing the music. And I'm telling you what, God is wanting to change the whole set list of your life. He's wanting to change all those things that have been going on in your head. And he goes, I want, I want this to reverberate in your heart. I want it to continue to play. Listen, when it says, when, it, when, you, when you hit your iPod deal where it says to keep playing the same music song over and over again, here's a song that he wants you to play. And that is, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. His goodness and his mercy endures forever and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when the enemy tries to play that song in your head, hey man, if, if God was really good, then why is he letting you go through these things? If God was really good, then why, am I, why is my marriage this way? If God was really good, then, then why is this stuff happening to me? The still remains. Louder still is the voice of God on the inside of you. And my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And the voice says this, that God is good even in the midst of your circumstance and situation. And he wants you to know that. Not in, just in here, but in here. He's a good father. He's a good God. And he's an amazing, he's an amazing protector and lover of our soul. Amen? Amen? I'm done. You stand. I'm going to pray for you. This is not a, one of those messages where you, I want you to go home and be like, well, that sure was a good message. This is a message that you need to carry with you the rest of this week and the rest of the next week and the rest of your lives. Because the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. So some of you thinking, well, I'm not going through a storm right now. But you will. I'm not trying to prophesy that over you. I'm just telling you, storms come and storms go. But you need to know that he remains. Amen. He remains. His word remains. And he's a good God. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you have done great things for us. You're an amazing God. Help us to know, Lord, that we're good. That you're good and, and for us. Lord, to help us to know, Lord, that you, that you have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Lord, that you've given us everything 
everything that pertains to life and godliness. Lord, that you've gone before us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that because of who you are and what you have done for us, Lord, we declare from our hearts that you are good. I pray, Lord, for those that are going through storms and trials and tribulations even right now. I pray, Lord, that they would know in their hearts, they would know in their minds, that they would know, Lord, that you are a good, good father and you're a good God. And so I bless our people, Lord. These, these are your people. They're our people, Lord. We thank you that they're blessed in the city, blessed in the country going in and coming out. I bless them when they put their hands to the plow. Bless their families, God. Lord, we bless the fruit of their hands when they go to work or they go to school. I pray, Lord, that your light would shine upon them, God, and that they would know who you are, Lord, and they know that you're good. And we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.